Hallelujah. You know what? There's nothing like being in the house of God and being in the presence of God. There is nothing like it. Hallelujah. If you would turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20, starting in verse 1. Pastor Matt had called me and asked me a couple days ago. He said, would I come and would I preach? And the Lord had given me a word a couple days before that. And as I was reading through this chapter, I was like, man, this is so good. I would love to preach this. Two days later, Pastor Matt called me and I was like, I'm your girl. I got you. So the Lord gave me a word and it's called a call to war. A call to war. Deuteronomy 20, starting in verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. Let me say that again. In a season of life where fear has come to grip and paralyze God's people, his word says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Did we not just hear that? As Sabrina prophesied, the Lord said, come, I am with thee. I will not leave you orphans. His word said, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 2. It shall be. When you are come nigh unto the battle, the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, hear, O Crossway Ministry, hear, O Believer, hear, O Naya. You can individually put your name there. Hear, O Robert, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. God is saying, there is going to be a battle. Amen. Get ready for the battle. Amen. But, look at this next part. Let not your heart faint. Right, right. Let your heart not suddenly surrender. Let it, as it encroaches upon you, let it not give up. Fear not. Do not tremble. Neither be you terrified because of them. He's saying it's coming. Get ready. The battle draws near. But let your heart not faint. Don't tremble in anxiety and in fear. Get ready. Don't be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God, it is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. God's plan from the beginning, before he had ever sent Jesus upon this earth. This is in the book of Deuteronomy, which is in the Torah, which is in the first five books of the Bible, that Moses had written these words from the Lord. Saying that God's plan all along was that he was going to send Jesus to save us. That Christ was going to be a place of refuge. He was going to be a haven. He was going to be a place of safety. And God's plan was always to yes. send Christ yes. to fight on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. The Hallelujah. Lord spoke this morning through Sabrina. How I not come that I might set you free. You're already free in Christ. And I don't know about you, but these last couple years, there's been times and, and days that, that I have struggled with and there has waged war against God's people. The enemy has waged war against God's people. And I believe that we need to stay engaged in the battle. And the battle is to protect your faith. To continue to believe the work that Christ has already done for us. That I am free. That I 
can have peace in the midst of a time and a season of chaos. That I can trust the word of God and the voice of God. And the Lord wrote this book in 1405 B.C. He said, look, there's going to come a season, Jessica, where there's going to be a battle that's going to be so great that it's going to strike fear in your heart and cause you to tremble. But I want you, Shelby, don't fear. Don't be afraid. For I am with thee and I fight for you. And I don't just fight for you. I'm fighting for your family. I'm fighting for your loved ones. I'm fighting for your job and at your workplace. I'm fighting for you. Hallelujah. This book was written at the end of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And we've been wandering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's coming to an end. Hallelujah. It's coming to an end. We're coming into a new year, y'all. Amen. And I'm excited about what God is going to Look, don't let our circumstance. Can I talk to you like family this morning? Yeah. Let's not let our circumstances and our situations snuff the fire out that's in our hearts. Amen. Let's not Amen. let our circumstances and our situations take the wind out of our sails. God has more for us. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. He wants us to be heavy laden. He wants to have our hands held down and our heads held low. But God is saying, I'm about to move. Get ready. There's going to be a war. There's going to be a battle, but I've already come to save you. I've already set the stage. The battle is already won. There's already victory in Christ. But I come to remind you this morning what we have. One person, 500 people, I don't care. I need to be reminded this morning of what I have in Christ. Hallelujah. What I've been given. They spent 40 years in the wilderness, which should have been an 11 day journey. Mm. Sometimes it takes us a while yes, ma'am. to learn a thing or two. Yes, ma'am. But you know what I love about the Lord? And I'm going to keep going back to some of the things that the Lord spoke through Sabrina. Is he said, even in your 40 years of wandering, mm. I'm not quitting on you. Hallelujah. Even in all of your mistakes. Maybe your doubts and your fears. I'm telling you, there's going to be a battle, but I'm letting you know, don't fear. That means God knew that we were going to be a fearful people. God knew that we were going to be terrified. God knew that we were going to tremble. God knew that our hearts were going to want to quit. And he was like, I'm not ashamed of your humanity. I died, and not only did I die for you, I died as your high priest that is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. That means he knew what it was like to be weak and to be feeble and to feel downtrodden. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. (coughs) When this book was written, it was written beyond the Jordan, right in the territory of Canaan. The territory of Canaan was the promised land. I don't know about you, but we live in the promises of God. Mm -hmm. He already died to give them to us. We're beyond the Jordan, beyond some of these trials, beyond some of these things that we face. And we're living in the land of Canaan. And sometimes there's so many giants in the land, we just can't see the promises of God. That's right. That's right. But this morning, I believe he sent me to remind you of his covenant with you. Yes. Okay? And I believe he wants us as believers to renew our commitment to him. Hallelujah. That's good. See? Yes. Like a renewal renewal of vows. Yes, You've been married for a while. 
You want to renew your commitment to your yes. spouse? Yes. That's good. And God is saying, look, we're already married. Mm -hmm. You've already given your heart to me. I love you and you love me. And we've been on this journey for a little while. But you know what? I believe that God in 2022 wants us as a church to say, Lord, I renew my vow and my commitment to you. I want to give you my heart all over again. I want to give it to you each and every day of my life, oh God. I have made some mistakes in 2021, but I want to forget that which is behind and press forward and pursue after Christ and Christ alone. And the beautiful thing about the blood of Jesus Christ is he says, okay, 2021. 2021 there we go let it go it's over it's yeah. done and when the enemy tries to bring it back up or a family member tries to bring it back up or a co-worker tries to bring it back up or a friend tries to bring it yeah. back up yeah. you can say no it's under the blood of jesus yeah. christ i am not the same the lord yeah. fights for me every single day i don't have to live there Come on, i don't have to wander you don't have to wander anymore. That's exciting to me. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants us to renew our commitment to him Hallelujah. this morning. Commitment means an attitude of heart of someone who works so hard to do something. Or the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause. Listen, you can't, we can't work ourselves up enough. To say, I'm going to stay dedicated to Christ. Right, right. Christ keeps us dedicated to Christ. Amen. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying this morning? Yes. You can't muster up, we can't muster up enough faith to say, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to conquer this thing in 2022. No, Jesus has already conquered this thing. Yes. Whatever this yes. thing might be in your life. You know, and I believe that God wants to bring a deep healing to the church. Yes. Robert and I were talking and we were talking about how, and I and I actually talking about how we feel like we get 10 steps ahead. Yes. All of a sudden our heads are above water and we're, we're walking this thing out. And then say another line of COVID hits the church again. And then it feels like you get knocked back down and then we're trying to, to get back up. But I believe in this season that God is bringing us as individuals deeper yeah, that's in it. him. That's it. Deeper and allowing the truth to be imprinted on our hearts that aren't just coming to church yeah. as a ritual or a routine. I need it. Shelby to sing that song and Naya and them to begin to worship. I need it. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I needed yeah. the spirit of God to move on me this morning. If I could be real, I am tired. It's tiring in the battle. Right, right. <laughs> it's tiring in the war. Sometimes it feels like, just like the children of Israel said, it would just be easier to go back to Egypt. Yeah. It would just be easier just to lay here and surrender. Mm -hmm. It would just be easier to not get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. It would just be easier to not go back to work. Mm -hmm. It would just be easier to not pray for that loved one. It would just be easier to not forgive. Mm -hmm. It would just be easier to go with the whims of my temptations. Yeah. Oh. It, would, it would just be easier because the battle becomes so fierce. The God is saying, look, I want you to learn from the past and look with hope and expectation to the future. Amen. Learn from the past. And you know what? We might blow it today. Yeah. But guess what? Today could be the past too. Amen. Learn from the past and let's look to the future with expectation and hope. But I want to say this, 
If you choose to renew your commitment to Christ and him reveal his covenant to you, and we learn from the past and look to the future, I'm telling you, the enemy is coming on our heels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when I believe the Lord is saying, look, Shelby, I'm calling you to war. I'm calling you Naya to war. I'm yeah, calling you yeah. Yvette to war. Yeah. I'm calling you Sabrina to war. I'm calling you to war for your own soul, but yes. to war for yes. your family and to war for your loved ones. Well, Angela, where does that happen? On our knees. Amen. The church in the beginning, in the book of Acts, were a praying church and a seeking church. They wanted to see God move. Yes. I want to see God move. Yeah. I want the rain. Hallelujah. I don't want just a trickle. Hallelujah. I want the rain of God's spirit to move in this house. That when people walk in here, bondages just begin to Hallelujah. break off of yes. their lives. The torment yes. of the mind. We get clothed in our right mind. Depression and anxiety begin to break. I mean, this season and time, more suicide, depression, and anxiety from the things that we have been facing have been on the rise, not just in the world, but in the church. Yeah, yeah. Come on. And we're looking for quick fixes to just kind of mask it over all of us. Right. If we want to be honest in one way or another, our, right. your fix might be looking different than mine. Right, right. But God is saying, look, no, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid. I want to fight for you. Jesus. So what I love about this story is if you'll go to Deuteronomy 19.3, Deuteronomy 19.3, God sets the stage with this, with the city of refuge. <coughs> Before the war, he sets up a refuge. Before the battle, he says this, thou shall prepare the way and divide the coasts of the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit. This is your inheritance. Into three parts and every slayer may flee hither. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee hither that he may live, that he may live Whosoever killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past. Why would I want to share this with you? God created cities of refuge for those who have committed manslaughter. Mm. But God created a city of refuge in Christ for those of us that are guilty. And my Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. Right. There is no righteous. No, not one. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So if we walked in the door this morning, puffed up and feeling high and mighty, that we are in some way more righteous than the next, yeah. you can check that at the door. Right, right. Because my Bible, my Bible says that we are all in need of a city of refuge. Yeah. We are all in need of a savior. Yeah. We are all, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. There is only one way, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So the, a manslayer is someone that killed someone unintentionally. Mm -hmm. But a relative or a friend would come after that person to kill them. Mm -hmm. right. So death was lingering on their heels. Right. And they would flee to the city of refuge. Mm -hmm. And once they got into the city walls, they were now protected. And death could not come in. So what am I saying to you? 
through Christ Jesus. What did I say this morning? I said a call to war. A wage is a ration for a soldier, something that is a stipend or a payment. When we sin, death comes in. Yeah. Whether we intentionally do it, right, right. whether we ignorantly do it, whether we unintentionally do it, there is still consequences for sin, and that is death. But God said all the way back in the book of Deuteronomy, look, death is going to come, but I want to give you life. I'm going to produce these cities, and not only that, it says, and divide the coast of the land. I'm going to make divisions because I want you to see and be separated from other nations that are not like you. See, you hide in the city of refuge from death, from sin. When we give our hearts to the Lord, we are now made free in Christ Jesus. Amen. You now have all of these benefits. So I decided to make my own little city a refuge up here. I'm put. I'm putting Ida in the city. <laughs> yeah, not Naya's gonna, Naya's gonna be in the city. Here she go. Give her her long braid. <laughs> Naya, girl, you in the city. All right. And all of the names of God surround the city. So, what are some of His names? His covenant names in the Old Testament. When things would take place, God would speak to his servants through his names. And he would say this, I am Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, meaning a victory banner that you can hold up over your life and say, he is my Jehovah Nisi. He is my victory. I hold up the banner of victory. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Yes. I don't know about you, but I believe that we need some emotional healing. Yes. We need some spiritual healing. Yes. We need some mental healing. Yes. We need some physical healing. And he's saying, look, my city of refuge. When you give your heart to me, you enter in to this city and I will heal. He spoke it through Sabrina this morning. I am the God who heals. Mm. I am Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is there. Amen. You make your bed in hell, he is there. Yeah. You make your bed in heaven, he is there. He is always there. He is Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord, my righteousness. Yeah. I said we don't have any righteousness in ourselves, but when we trust in the city, when we trust in Christ, when we continue to wage war against the power of darkness, I can say I am righteous because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Shall we sang in this morning? He is my testimony. Oh. Why? Because he's my Jehovah Tiskanu. Yeah. He is my righteousness. He's my Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He said, I will prepare the way. You just got to walk in it. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Makedesh, the Lord who sanctifies. Mm. Well, I thought I sanctified myself. No, there's no way. Hallelujah. We can change this ugly, wretched That's heart. Right. That's right. Amen. Only surrendering and believing. That's too easy. That's it, though. But it's not that easy. <laughs> surrendering and believing. Surrendering and believing. He is El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. He yes. is Adonai, my master. And I put, I put master at the bottom because I should be building upon the fact that the Lord isn't just my ticket to heaven. Oh, He's yeah. my master. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He is my master. What his word says to be true is true. Hallelujah. There is blessings and curses in the book of Deuteronomy. If you read through it, to say, if you obey my word, you will be blessed. And this is what you shall receive. But if you disobey 
be your righteousness. I will be your sanctifier. I will be your healer and your provider. I will be when everything else begins to fade and crumble. I will be there. Hallelujah. He says, I give this to you as an inheritance so that you could be free so death could no longer have a sting. This, and then it says this, you shall flee. I like this word flee. You shall flee to the city of refuge. See, the case against the manslayer was true. He killed someone. Right, he, right. It actually took place. Yeah. This was a case against them. Well, I don't know what yours is, but if we could write up our case on the board, if you were to walk into a courtroom and the judge was to say, well, Danielle, this is your case. This is what we have against you. Right, right. This is what we have against you, Naya. And God is saying, look, this is the case against the manslayer. But I have made a place for him to find refuge. I have made a place for him to find hope. I have made a place for him where he is not guilty, where death cannot come in, where sin cannot have its way. Flee means to vanish away or escape. You can vanish away in Christ. Your old man is now vanished away in Christ. Your mistakes and our failures and our weaknesses when we flee to him, can vanish away in Christ. When God looks at you, all our mistakes and weaknesses, when we flee to him, vanish away in Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I'm not the same person as I used to be. And I'm so glad that when God looks at me, he does not see all of those frailties or those mistakes or those doubts or those sinful activities. But he sees the blood of Jesus and he sees that I have fleed to the city of refuge. Once had a case against me is now no longer. Hallelujah. The case is not there. Hallelujah. The case is Christ. Yes. <laughs> the case is now Christ. And Christ has nailed the handwriting of ordinances that were against us to the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As we travel through this journey as believers, we're going to make many different mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're probably make a mistake today or tomorrow. Yes, yes. Say things we shouldn't yes. say or... Yeah. Have attitudes we shouldn't have. And yeah. See, circumstances and situations come to crush us to the point where our faith begins to suffer. Yeah. Some situations take the wind out of our sail, as I have said, but God is inviting us, Sabrina said it, to come. Yeah. To come and to find refuge and hope, looking forward to a future in Him. Yeah. Well, Angela, how can we look forward to a future after all this? has gone on in these years these last couple of years god still has a hope to Amen. prosper you and to not to harm you to give you a hope and a future there's still a future for the church of jesus christ there's still refuge for the church of jesus christ hallelujah 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 it, the bible says this that he's, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Yeah. I, I had a picture in my head when I was thinking about this. I used to play year-round softball. And when you're running the bases and the ball gets there first, the umpire can call you out. But as we begin to trust in the Lord as our strong tower, when we run into his name and we are safe i had this picture of me just running the bases and the umpire the holy ghost just saying safe all day long yeah. safe yes. safe <laughs> safe, safe. Yes. the ball might be right behind safe safe, safe. say you messed up safe yes. you blew it safe you you didn't do so good today safe you yes. doubted safe yes. you are safe the umpire, that's all he's got yeah. to say to you. Hallelujah. Is you're safe. Hallelujah. You're safe in Christ. Yeah. I don't care Hallelujah. what happened yesterday. Oh you're safe in Jesus Christ Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. Today, and as we run to the city of refuge, that's you are it. safe. That's it. You say, I don't 
Savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't have joy today, oh God. Be real with the Lord. Yes. 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 He knows anyway. <laughs> don't come into the prayer closet. Oh, Holy Father. <laughs> you can do that if that's your heart. <laughs> but sometimes we have to be like, Lord. Yes. Oh. I don't know what to do. And I am blowing it over and over and yeah. over again. And you can just hear the Holy Ghost say, Why? Because of the blood. Of you. You. Look, if you don't walk out any, if you don't Thank get anything you, else from this message, just get oh. saved. <laughs> you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. Well, I'm not righteous. Yes, you are because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Get your faith back on Him. Yes. Back. Back on him, God. I renew my commitment to you. I want to renew my marriage vows to you this morning. God, I look to you now. I might have been looking somewhere else, but God, I don't want to let it slip. Lord, let me look back to you this morning. Bible says, Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That word press means I pursue after. And I had to go back and I had to take inventory in my own heart. My heart's none of your business. Your heart's not my business either. But I had to see God, was I pursuing you? Was I pressing towards you in this area or that area or whatever the case may be? And I say, God, okay, I see. But Lord, I want to pursue you. Yes. Yes, Lord. I want to pursue your ways. Yes. I want to pursue your word. I want to pursue your presence. God, I want the presence of God that we felt in this house this morning. I want that in my car. I want that in my home. I want that on my job. I want to be enveloped in the presence of God. I want to be in the gym training people and just feel the presence of God all over me. Because you can, we can have that. Why? Because he is there. Yes. He is there. So then, once we establish that we are in the city of refuge, one, he said to me, Angela, I want you to renew your commitment to me. And I want to renew my covenant with you. And then he said, let go of the past and pursue me. Let go of the past, leave it where it is, it's dead and buried, and pursue me. But then he said, but I call you to war. I call you to war. So Deuteronomy 21 says, when thou goes out to battle against thine enemies, you see horses and chariots and people more than you. Be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. He said, when you go out to battle, we have a battle to fight. Amen. We are not going, if we think that we are just going to skirt through this thing, that's not the way that this works. I remember when I first got saved, I made this mistake. That when things came up, I would blame God. Yeah. Like, I thought this Christianity thing was supposed to be the answer to everything. Right, right. I thought <laughs> things were supposed to get real good. But instead, life was still taking place. Right, right. <laughs> life was still going on. There's still temptations. Yeah. But I thought, but I thought that, you know, I'm free. Mm -hmm. But you have to, we have to access what God has given us. Yes, ma'am. You can have a house, right. but you can stay on the porch if you don't put the key in the house door and walk on the inside. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live on the porch. Mm -hmm. I, I lived that way for a little while. <laughs> I don't want to live like that no more. Hallelujah. There's a whole city that God has given us a promise. 
flesh and blood. Your spouse is not your problem. Naya is not my problem. Jeff is not my problem. Uh-oh. <laughs> my Somebody at work is not my problem. I need to look in the mirror and say, okay, God, I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers of the air and high places that have come to destroy my faith, to take my eyes off of Christ, to take my eyes off of his word, and to get me to turn another way. That's the job of the enemy. And he's been doing it through catastrophes, through plagues, so to say, if you want to say it that way, through COVID, through the loss of jobs, through the loss of loved ones. Yeah. We actually had a gentleman who was 29 years old in our first fitness business pass away from COVID. Wow. And it just bro broke our heart. Yeah. 29. Yeah. God, I don't understand why, but there is a battle raging that we as believers, see, he's in heaven. He loved the Lord. He yeah. was a minister and he loved the Lord. So he's in a great place. I'm sure he's not thinking about what we're doing down here right now. He is in the presence and the glory of God, but we can look at that and that can snuff the fire out. We can blame God for life still taking place. And say, God, why? Well, he said, the battle draws near. Get ready to be engaged in the battle. Well, how can I do that? By believing the word of God and what he said. He said, bring your hands to war and your fingers to fight. When I looked that up, hands represented power. You hold the power of God in our hands. Yeah. Through believing in the name of Jesus Christ, a good father gives his child his name, mm. and he has given us his name to use. Y'all ever got pulled over by a cop before, and you knew another cop, and you said, yeah, we know Nye. Nye gets pulled over all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, <laughs> case closed. Amen. City of Safe. Refuge. <laughs> Safe. <laughs> But you use the name of the cop that you know to get out of the ticket. Well, Jesus, we can use his name. He is, he is your father. I can say, I have the name of Jesus Christ. I am marked with the name of Jesus Christ. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard by the power of his blood. You are safe. Of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fear comes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anxiety comes, Jesus. Yes. Temptation comes, Jesus. I am a child of the King. I am a child of God. We need to know who we are in Jesus. Yes. We want to learn all these other things in this Hallelujah. world and be good and all this other stuff. And look, I understand. Because I like to perfect what God has given me. And the skill set that God has given me. Hallelujah. But he's saying, I just want you to know me. Hallelujah. To know me. Amen. He said, we wrestle. Wrestle means to partake in a struggle of difficulty or a problem. So he's going to say, you're in a wrestling match. I remember when I was little, me and my brother used to have these wrestling matches all the time. So we used to show my parents. We'd be like, watch. Watch us fight. We're going to wrestle. My brother would always beat me. He's bigger and stronger than me. But God, I wish the Lord was there with Angela. Throw him off me. <laughs> but that's what the Lord does with us as his children. Saying, right. oh, no more. She's safe. That temptation, no more. She's safe. Just chucking them off of us. Because yeah. we can hide in the city of refuge. He said, the Bible says this. 2 Timothy 2.3 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That word endure means undergo hardship and suffer trouble. Wait a second. That wasn't in, that wasn't when they came and told me about Jesus. They didn't say you were going to endure hardship. 
I might have thought a time or two about that. I remember, I remember being saved and being like, this is not what this is supposed to be. <laughs> this is, the, 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 I, I always said this, I was a better non-Christian than I was a Christian. Yeah. But that was because I was trusting in the wrong things. Right, right. I was trusting in myself to set myself apart for the kingdom of God instead of trusting in God and surrendering to him That's it. and surrendering to his ways. Once I started laying a hold of that and realizing actually what I had in Jesus, that's when things started yeah, getting yeah. exciting. Mm. That's when life started being birthed inside of me because I wasn't looking at the case that was against me anymore. I was looking at Jesus. I recognized there was a case. But that he said, it, I was safe. Uh -huh. He said, I was safe. He said, endure hardness as a what? Good soldier. A good soldier endures hardness for Jesus Christ. He said, be not afraid when you see the horses and chariots and the people that are greater. He's, gonna, he's saying, this circumstance is going to be so loud and so consuming. Could you imagine horses and chariots running behind you? Or what that would sound like? You ever been in a battle that's been so long and so fierce that's all you hear? Is the noise of the battle? The noise of the battle? And he's saying, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee. They are coming to overtake you and to paralyze you and get you to not know that you have a hope anymore, that you have a future anymore. The enemy's job is to get you to quit, to faint, and to lie down and to not believe God is who he says he is. He said, you're going to see it. It's not going to be a hidden battle. You're going to see it. But the Lord gives them instructions to be not afraid. Don't have dread. Don't be frightened of the battle that is before you. Why? One, the Lord is the one who keeps his word. He is the one that keeps his covenant. He is the one that knows every hair on our head. He is the one that hung the stars and the moon and the sky, who created the heaven and earth. He is the one who died on Calvary. He's the one who opened up the Red Sea. He's the one that nailed the handwriting of ordinances that were against us to the cross and made a show of them openly. He is the faithful one. He is the good father. He is the good shepherd. He is the provider of manna in the wilderness even when they were wandering. Yeah. He's the one that caused them to cross the Red Sea and the Jordan. He is faithful to bring us out of Egypt. He brought us out of Egypt and he's going to remove everything that is a remnant of Egypt out of our heart. Good. That's good. Deuteronomy 22 says, and it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle, the priest approach and speak unto the people. It shall be means it will come to pass when you draw nigh to the battle, the priest shall approach and speak to the people. The priest is the one that was the mediator, the one that stood in the gap. Well, we have a high priest in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Hebrews 4.14, seeing then that we have a great high priest, that he has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. That means hold fast means to seize or retain our declaration. As children of God, we should be holding to our declaration of who Jesus is in our lives. We should be declaring it over ourselves, over our families. I'm not talking about name and claim and grabbing all that stuff. I'm talking about declaring the word of God over your life and not letting it go in the midst of the battle. Because that's what we can tend to do. When you draw nigh, that means we're traveling in a forward motion. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to go back to last year. I don't want to go back to yesterday. I want to continue to move forward in Christ. Amen. 
The presence of God went with the priests. So when I seen this, I seen the Bible says that when the battle draws nigh, the presence of God goes first. When the battle arises and draws near, the presence of God goes first. Robert, I had a song back there. And this, it's okay if you don't. Have it. Yes, yes, that's it. So when I started to think about this battle that was on the rise, and the priests going first, because it says the priest went and they spoke to the people. I began to think of this song, and it's called The Battle Belongs to the Lord. And it goes, in heavenly armor we'll enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand, the battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory. Honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. Listen to these words. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When your enemy presses in hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption draws near. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. Those are good words. In heavenly armor, Hallelujah. we enter the land. Yes. When the enemy presses in hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. When the power of darkness yes. comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. I mean, I could sing that all day long. Yes. And we used to sing that a cappella like we just did yeah. in chapels. And the Spirit of God yeah. would move like never before. Ooh, yeah. I want to tell you this morning, gird up. Gird up in your heavenly armor. Gird yes. up in the truth yes. of God's word. Gird up in worship. Hallelujah. Gird up in prayer. Yes. Gird yourself up in the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. Knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. Wear the belt of truth. Shove your feet in the preparation of the gospel. Know who you are and who you believe. Flee yes. to the city of refuge. Yes. When that thing comes up, flee. Vanish away in Christ. Because in his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. The Bible says this, hear, O Israel. That means give attention to this with obedience. Listen, hear, O Israel. Give attention to what I'm saying. Not just hear it, but with followed by obedience. You approach a battle this day. He says, against your enemies, let your heart not faint. That word faint means suddenly grow weak that you would surrender to the enemy. Mm. Suddenly grow weak wow. that we would give in to the enemy. Mm -hmm. That you would tremble. It says, do not tremble. Do not shake involuntarily as a result of anxiety or frailty. And be not terrified. Do not break under the harassment of the enemy. He's saying, listen to this and give attention to this with obedience. Follow it. Follow it with obedience because your heart is going to want to quit. Right, right. But I am telling you, do not give in to the harassment of the enemy. 
but God. Deuteronomy 24 says, for the Lord your God is with you. He goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. Psalms 144.1 says, Blessed be the Lord of my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, he is whom I trust, who subdue my people under me. Teaching our hands to war and our fingers to fight through every trial, through every circumstance. He says this, I will subdue your enemy under you. I will tread them into pieces. Mm. I will conquer them. Mm. Whatever you walked in with this morning, yes. he says to save, subdue my people to save you. That means, that word save means wide open and free. Victory. Hallelujah. The whole story was about God wanting to give his people victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I believe, Naya, if you would come, if y'all would stand with me. I believe, if you will, with me this morning, that God wants us to renew our commitment to him. And that doesn't mean God standing at the altar and saying, God, I'm gonna do everything perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna do all of this. No, it's saying, God, I'm here and I trust you yes. and I surrender to you. Hallelujah. I'm here and I trust you Hallelujah. and I surrender my commitment to your way, to Hallelujah. you. And that he would gird us up for war to subdue our enemy under our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if that's you this Hallelujah. morning, if you need God to move and we want to renew our commitment to him for 2022, he's calling us to war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.